Jia. I want to welcome y'all back to another episode of the Gangster Chronicles. And we in the building. I'm with my Nia. Big Steel in the house. And tonight we have my guy, EDI from the Outlaws. What's happening, bro? Man, you got it. Man, Appreciate I'm y'all having me. Oh, for sure, man. You know, first I want to start off with saying, man, um, I'm glad you're here to conduct this interview. I'm glad you're looking healthy, man, and you're in the yeah. land of the living, man, because... As black men, we all share that, man. It's like every month we hearing about somebody that had a heart attack or a stroke. It, it almost make you think, man, like we under attack, like under siege, because I'm talking about, I'm hearing about brothers having heart attacks that go to the gym every day. Yeah, just vicious. They take Thanks. care of themselves, you know what I mean? I'm not I was walking out the gym. That's what I was, I'm saying. I had just wrapped up a, a workout and, and, and started feeling you know, like I had a 300-pound fat bitch sitting on my chest. Mm. Like my chest just felt all this pressure that I never felt before. So I just figured I might have went a little bit too hard. I was doing a leg day. Like, you know, I'm going to uh, have my girl with me. I'm like, yeah, take me home. You know, I'm going to go lay down. I can't, you know, catch my breath right now. She she just looking at me, getting in the car, and then she just was like, nah, you, you don't look right. We going to the hospital. Mm -hmm. you know, but I ain't have no idea, nothing on me. So we had to stop by my house to grab some shit. And while we there, it's just getting worse. Mm -hmm. You know, we went straight to the hospital. And, and, and when I got there, it was like, you in the middle of a cardiac arrest right now. We taking you into surgery right now. And you didn't even consider that it might be a heart attack. That was like your last guess? Absolutely. Like I said, I just wanted to go lay down. But they told me if I'd have did that, then I probably wouldn't be sitting here with y'all. Oh, man, God is good. Yeah, all, all the time. time. Mm. Mm. God is good. And um, I think a lot of our eating habits, you know, I'm guilty of that. percent. You know, to where I leave here, I stop through, you know, I, I run through Popeye's real quick and do the apple pies and, you know, and all that stuff. And it you, just love that that you love that shit, don't I you? I love it, man. I'll but be I'm seeing your ass every time we leave. I'll be like, your ass go ahead and get that motherfucker. Popeyes, huh? Yeah, I'm on my way in there because you know it's a little white girl in there. She hooked me up with all kind of stuff. It's like as they bought the clothes. So if I order one apple pie, she throwing five or six up in there. You hear this nigga? Mm -hmm. You can't <laughs> find me this nigga. <laughs> you know, I'm getting the food stuff. I'm bringing wife stuff home. Man, I got you some chicken. What you getting chicken all late at night for? He I like the mother that worked at Taco Bell at the end of the night. They just like nigga take all this shit home. And then you got bags of mother bean burritos and all, all kind, kind of, of stuff. just bullshit. All kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and then, you know, late night, man, the lifestyle we live, you know what I'm saying, doing shows and traveling, it ain't nothing, it ain't nothing good open um, at that time of night. I think there's something like, you know, we don't, we don't kind of uh, uh, tend to going through that process of, of <clears throat> I don't know, I, I could even say uh, um, even on the block, situations you know when you're on the block you in the hood you repping the set you banging you don't be like nigga you thinking of i need to cop my next sack or or pistol or whatever whatever you ain't thinking about i need to give me some other health insurance you know mm -hmm. niggas getting dumped on and shit. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you with products and that, that, you know, might jeopardize your health or whatever, and inhaling or whatever, or whatever, man. Niggas don't be thinking about that. You know what? And not just who, health insurance, insurance, who, period. Who thinks of, uh, man, niggas be coming through dumping. I might get shot today. I might need me some medical insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to get blasted on the shit and you come home and shit, the medical bills be sky High or just on a normal ass checkup, or they just go pack you up and put niggas, you out because niggas, you... niggas, uh, I guess you know, uh, moms used to have a lot of home remedies for niggas when they got caught colds and bullshit like that. So, niggas try to follow that that regime, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm gonna just tell me go drink some water, yeah, or I'm gonna like, Mom, my stomach like, hurts. She's like, yeah. Go on there and drink some water, take some rope. My head hurt, go and drink some water. <laughs> Robitussin killed yeah. everything, nigga. Everything. Everything. Ginger ale. You know what? The oh, one yeah, thing ginger ale for sure. Is a hospital cannot turn you away because you don't have insurance, but they aren't going to give you top-notch treatment. They just go bandage you up and send you home. And that's after three, four hours sitting there because, mm -hmm. like, if you ain't got no insurance, they be like, okay, 
fill this paperwork out and go sit over there. Definitely gonna be waiting about go sit over there a couple hours. You gonna be waiting half the mother day. Hundred percent. Well, I found out I had something called tachycardia. I was at the USC football game. This when Chris was playing there. They was playing Utah, and you know how game time that they doing the um, pregame celebrations, the planes flying over and stuff. So I'm like, I got to use the bathroom. So I run upstairs. We sit down in the pair section. So I'm like in the second row. So I run upstairs, you know, to try to get back on time, do my thing, come back down. And when I came back down, I never started sweating. Never stopped sweating. Mm. I was like sweating to the point to where my wife was looking at me like, "You all right?" And she said, I just had this glazed look. And so my heart is just going boom, 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 boom. And I'm scared. Next thing I knew, I remember my boy, shout out to my homeboy, Dennis. You know, Den, you know, big oh, Dennis know Jackson. Dennis for sure, shout out Dennis. And Horace McCoy got me. They lifted me up, dog, out the things. And the USC hospital dude is there. He give me some little thing, man. And like, you know, it stopped a little bit. And I'm in the hospital. I'm listening back to the game trying to find out what's happening because that was Chris's first start too. Mm. So I don't know if I was just so excited, man, that I just, you know, got stuck in the that loop. Anxiety kicked you know, Anxiety, in. you know, you like you don't want your son getting beat because he going against a dude that's projected to go in the top two rounds. And you like, oh man, I don't know if it was that, man, but it made me really start thinking. I started taking my medicine because the biggest thing we don't do, we don't take that high blood pressure medicine I don't know. Yeah, we don't even like going to the doctor. We don't. We don't like doing enough stuff. And I'm going to put it like out there. We don't like going to the doctor, man. You know A lot of brothers don't like taking the high blood pressure medicine because it messes with your little virility a little bit. A little bit. Um, it gives you headaches and stuff. So a lot of homies, you be like, man, I'm not doing that because of this and that. But I think, man, being in the land of the living, lay presence over being able to lay some pipe a certain way. For me, it do anyway because I'd rather just go ask the doctor, hey, man, I need something for this now. Because I'm taking this and it's doing that. So I, I think we got to do a better job. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. We hear that all the time. We got to do a better job of watching our diet. But it's starting to get real scary because I'm seeing people who watch everything they eat. Um, vegans going to the gym all the time. And they dropping dead of heart attacks. Like I said, I, you know, I, I did a post about my situation just to you know share and educate. And I said my old lifestyle caught up with me because I lived this lifestyle as far as like you said, I'm, I'm worrying about how to make it to the mall. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying. I'm worrying about not being the next one that's that's up out of here through the gun violence or whatever. You know, going to jail or some like that. So health is third or fourth mm -hmm. when it really should be number one. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because if you ain't here, if, if you ain't healthy, it don't matter. And so, um, you know, even though I had made some lifestyle changes, like in 220, lost a lot of weight, started going to the gym on a regular basis, changed my diet, that artery was still clogged up from the years of eating bullshit Popeyes at late at night, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. Whatever you can get your hands on after a show, drinking and smoking every day. I had never took a break from weed since I started smoking it at 17 years old. I smoked literally every day, unless we was in a country where, you know, we couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. And that was rare. You know, so forced me to, you know, really take a long look at how I was living and make some real grown man decisions and make some real changes. You have to, especially when you got people that's depending on you too. I'll tell you another nice. thing. We have to make sure that we have life insurance. I get so mad when I go out there and I see the people, not because they asking for money, but I'm just like, they, you shouldn't be in that position to where your family got to stress and struggle now to bury you because you, you don't have no insurance. You don't have no health insurance, and, and it's like a thing like this. Like you can get, you don't have to go out and get a two, three million dollar policy. You can get a fifteen thousand dollar policy to just cover it. So if something happened to you, your family ain't got to worry about that burden. They could be going through enough without you. But I would say, you know, if you got kids and stuff, you can go get you a half a million dollar insurance policy, and they have insurance that you can put on your house to where if you're a homeowner and if you die, your house is paid for. I wanted to make sure in the event of my demise, because trust me, all my brothers out there, we leaving this planet one day. That's for damn sure. We don't oh, know definitely. when. And we don't know when. It's not like you got a warning. Well, Mr. Steele, I see you're going to live until you're 78, and you're going to, you know, you're going to die of natural cars, barring you don't get hit by a car or something like that. We ain't that lucky. We can't predict it. So I'd rather be prepared to know that if something happened to me, the wife is taken care of. But that's your mind state right now. What was your mind state at 20, 21 years old? 
you know what? Fortunately, man, I had some good people around me advise me that I actually got life insurance, a good policy when I was 22. Mm, okay. Because I had an older homeboy that kept the same stuff I'm telling people now. Because I wasn't thinking about that. I was making some decent money. Man, I'm not thinking about that. I'm immortal. That's our mindset, especially as black men. With all the stuff we don't survive, man, I'm not. I'm in the clear. No, I ain't worried about nothing. Yeah, I guess we don't, like I said, I guess in those years of, of when you're trying to establish yourself as a, you know, uh, a man, an adult, you know, um, especially when you're coming from that, that side of life, the side where I came from, um, like we don't, you know, I don't think too many of us was thinking about. Man, I'm gonna go get me some life insurance. Did you have some when you was? Did you have some? Either? That might have been like a. I didn't, I didn't get. I didn't get. That no. was like a, a, a. That's what the old people did. You get me? Uh, they got life insurance. That's what my mom and my dad or grandparents did. Nigga, I'm 19 years old. I need some. Well, life at 19, insurance. you really definitely ain't on that. You said you didn't have none at all. I didn't have none at all, and, and, and if somebody brought it up to me, I, I didn't really want to talk about exactly. it because it's like it I don't, I'm not finna. I'm, I, don't, I don't plan on dying. You know what I mean? Like, time, like you said, you think you're gonna live forever? How many times you conversating about, hey, my nigga, you you, you, you getting you some life and shit, nigga? We on the road, smoking tour buses and motherfucking pussy and Kentucky Fried Chicken and all kind of dumb. Nigga, don't be talking to me about no life insurance, nigga. I'm, I'm 20 years old. See, I'd nigga. have been that dude in the bus aspect. talking to everybody about it. Nigga, I got a pistol in my pocket, some mother. You money. especially would have needed something. I didn't think about it, nigga. Because you know you got to think I'm about shoot, it like I'm going to shoot back if a nigga shooting. Okay. That's my Definitely don't, That's my aspect. I'm going to shoot let death come into your mind at that. Let me ask both of y'all individual question. Once you got on in the game, was you your household's primary breadwinner? Absolutely. And you was your house, your family's primary breadwinner, right? Yeah, I, I, it was just me. You was, I, didn't, I didn't have the wife and, but listen, and kids and but all that. But you was that. probably helping moms out though, right? Right. So if something would have happened to you, let's re, I'd be remiss to say that your mama would have suffered along with your kids and whoever else, right? Mm-hmm. Because that would have been a few twos and few she'd get from you every month to help her out and get through. Because we all do that as soon as we get some money. The first thing we go do is take care of the house. We go make sure moms are straight. Even if it's something simple as I'm going to pay your cell phone bill and I'm going to pay for this every month for you so you don't have to worry about it. Right. You know, we don't think about that, man. And that's why I think, man, I wish we would have more of these discussions when we have on this platform. Because one thing that I didn't want to do tonight is I didn't want to talk to you about Tupac the whole night. You got you a whole nother career. You a your own individual. 100%. You feel what I'm saying? So I wanted to talk and I to you appreciate about real that. stuff. You know what I'm saying? Sure. About about real stuff. And, uh, and it's a great way to start it off too. You know what I mean? Because this is education, and people need to hear it. You know, and even though we wasn't talking to it, talking about it in our 20s or what have you, it's a it's a 20 year old that's gonna see this. Mm -hmm. Somebody in their 20s that's gonna be thinking differently than we was thinking. Like you know what? I may I may need to go ahead and look into that right now, today, and not wait until. We get our age and, you know. Well, I think it's kind of our duty as elder statesmen, so to speak. Because, you know, if there's nobody talk to about you, I'm talking to you about it now. Because right. somebody, thank God, somebody talked me, talked me. I still got the same policy I got. And I think that policy is like 1.2 million or something like that. So I be telling my wife all the time, man, I check about it. Here, you go be up. <laughs> you got your little stuff. You got this, you know, over there. I said, you go be up on what you go do. Your 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 brakes working good on your shit, right? Hey man, I hope so. they get acting funny. <laughs> they get acting funny. She gonna come up. 